The rigid 18 volt compact bandsaw. Is this something you need in your tool arsenal? We'll let you find out in just a moment. I'm Tim Johnson. You're watching Shop Tool Reviews. This is the Rigid R8604B for bare tool. I don't believe they even offered in a kit yet. So basically the R8604. And it's their 18 volt compact bandsaw. So the idea is compact design, lightweight, pretty small, but still running on the 18 volt platform. So you get a little more power, a little more cut capacity as well. So you get a full two and a half inch width cut capacity and a two and a half inch depth as well. Now there's quite a few features on this saw that I really like, especially that it's in a compact design. I'll wait till we get over to the test bench though to actually talk about that. Basically you get a six speed speed dial on here. It's not a variable speed trigger, but you do get this six speed dial and really it's more than six speed. It's a completely variable speed dial as well. So you can get in between numbers, in between speeds as well. Anything all the way up to 680 uh, feet per minute with the blade speed. It's running a 32 and 7 8 inch blade. Uh, not sure on the tooth count on that blade, but I'm sure you can get several different blades depending on what you're cutting. We tried it with a two amp hour battery to kind of keep things slim, uh, to keep things lightweight, and it actually made a lot of cuts and we got quite a few bars left on the battery as well. But you could run a four, six amp hour battery on this thing as well, but it's probably just overkill. Again, this is a compact saw. The idea is fit in tight spots, be lightweight to carry, carry your saw to your cutting rather than cut it, you know, carrying all your material uh, to the chop saw or to the band saw. Hey, let's get over to the test bench. Let's actually talk about some of the features. We'll make quite a few cuts on it and then we'll come back and wrap this up. The Rigid R8604 18 volt compact band saw. Uh, this is a very light and nimble bandsaw. Um, typically bandsaws are a little bit more bulky. Uh, and I like to see that this is an 18 volt design as well. The compact size and an 18 volt. So you don't have that full size lugging around, but you still got some capacity, which is two and a half inches, as well as a two and a half inch depth, two and a half inch width, uh, cutting capacity. So you can still cut decent sized stuff. Uh, you're not gonna cut huge stuff, but again, that's not what this is made for. This is their compact design. This is a brush tool. It doesn't need to be a brushless tool. This is one of those cases where it needs torque, doesn't need a lot of speed, doesn't need a lot of efficiency either. Still a battery is gonna last you quite a while when you're cutting. Um, so it doesn't need to be a brushless motor. Save on the money, get the brush and motor. That's absolutely fine. One thing I like to see is we're vented very well right here on the motor. Uh, we also have a big heat, uh, heat sink right here, some kind of dissipation a big aluminum heat sink there in that window where they're cooling electronics as well. I like to see that. That's always going to keep the tool a lot safer. Uh, you do just have an on off trigger here with a trigger lock. Uh, but what you have is a speed dial where you can actually set that speed and leave it. And that's everywhere from 320 to 680 feet per minute uh, is basically your blade speed. Uh, also, those aren't you know, single steps or you know, half steps. You at, literally have a variable speed dial here where there's several notches in between uh, each one of those speeds. So you can literally set that uh, blade speed exactly where you need it. Obviously the 18 volt uh, battery goes right here. Um, we'll put that on here in one moment. And what you'll get with this, this comes as a bare tool and it comes with a 32 and 7 8 inch blade. So that's the basically blade size, 32 and 7 8 inches. Not sure of the tooth count on this one. Looks pretty fine. Uh, so definitely made for cutting, cutting metals, cutting steel, stuff like that. We'll try that out here in a moment as well. Uh, nice rubber over molding where your hands are going to go on your most of your secondary or auxiliary handle or you know second hand placement, as well as on your primary. Uh, you also get a rafter hook here. I will probably take that off. I'm not working a lot in, in, uh, in on ceiling joists and floor rafters, things like that. So probably take that rafter hook off. But again, you know, if you're in construction or you're working a lot of things where you want to hang it on, uh, you can pull that off or you can leave it on there. Um, I'm going to pull it off again, just something else to get in the way. Uh, doesn't look like it comes with a blade guard. Well, it doesn't come with one. I'm not sure if you can get one or not. Uh, I believe on some of the other models, you can, you can get a blade guard. I do like to see a couple of things here. Uh, number one, a complete, you know, um, uh, you know, sturdy chassis here. There's not a lot of flex in this tool whatsoever. Nice and sturdy. Also the bearings used here. So we got double stack bearings here where the blade uh, rides. 
uh, on both either side of the blade, on the front and on the back side of, uh, of the blade, as well as down here, you also have another bearing down here where basically the back side of this blade is gonna ride, especially when you're putting force on the cut and then you're riding on a bearing there. You're not just riding on a piece of flat aluminum. And then you have another bearing here, keeping that blade in track, if you will. Um, and then you have rubber coated wheels here that again are gonna grip that blade pretty well. Um, shouldn't let it slip on, on mate while you're making your cuts. Uh, should grasp that well and again, keep everything on track. You have arrows here on the wheels telling you which way this is turning. Um, and to do those blade changes very quickly without any tools, you can just flip this up, flip it all the way around like that. And now you know your wheels are out of the way. We'll go in the blade guides first. By the way, it helps to have some cut proof gloves on like I've got. And then we'll keep some tension on this. Work that around. Make sure you're all the way down into the into the uh, the channels here or where the blade rides. And now you can take your lever here and it should self tension everything. And so now you're good to go. Work that around by hand first. There we go. So now we're good to go. So now I can stick my battery in here, which I, by the way, I'm just using a two amp hour battery. Take off my blade lock, my trigger lock. Make sure everything rides well and now you're ready to go. Uh, another thing you get here is an LED light. So shine a little bit of light on your work as you're making your cut. That does come in handy, especially if you've got a pencil mark on something that you're working on. Uh, now you know exactly where that blade's gonna go. You can see that pencil mark even if it's in dim light and you can cut right on your mark. So nice to have that little LED there, light there as well. Let's make some cuts and see how it does. Let me interrupt here for just one moment. If you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you didn't like it, by all means, hit that thumbs down button. But will you let us know in the comments why? Also, will you hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our channel and that bell notification, that's gonna let you know when new videos are available. Back to the video. So we'll make a few cuts here. Uh, this is just a piece of aluminum, should cut very, very easy. Uh, but I just wanted to show you some different, different materials, different substrates uh, using the compact man saw. Uh, I could easily work this with one hand. So just as long as I guide my cut in, I can easily work this with one hand. So if I set it against the shoe here, one hand, no problem whatsoever. Um, so something small like that, you could one hand that Probably not recommended. It's probably why they have a handle there. Uh, but anyway, just showing you that. Very smooth running saw. So cutting conduit, cutting aluminum tubing like that, no problem whatsoever. Uh, it's not a power issue, and I don't think you're going to run into a power issue. You're probably just going to run into a capacity situation, you know, on a, on a compact saw like this, uh, especially on this 18-volt rigid. I don't think you're going to have any problem where you don't have the power to make a cut. Again, it's gonna be a, a blade or a capacity uh, scenario. So this is some uh, nice thick, that's at least, that's more than an eighth, that's almost 3 16 inch angle iron. Uh, probably inch and a half, I would assume. Maybe two inch, measure that. Two inch, so two inch angle iron. Uh, so we got a two and a half inch capacity, so should have no problem cutting through this. And by the way, I've got my speed on speed six. I'll slow this down a little bit. I'll say it go to five. So no problem at all doing a 90 degree cut on that. Um, now let's see if we can do like a 45 on that two inch angle. And you're gonna have to trust me that I'm putting a 45 on it, by the way. I'm not gonna get the square out, so.
Okay, so it looks like doing a 45 on a piece of two inch, it's not gonna have the capacity to do that. To do that. I didn't figure so, that's a pretty wide cut that's really spanning a lot of material on a piece of two inch. You see it made the flat cut, but when it has to, to swallow that here in the channel, it's not gonna be able to do that. So probably do a, you know, a 25 degree, 22 and a half degree, no problem at all, just won't do that 45. Let me go ahead and cut that off. So that's probably the, you know, that's going to be probably the top of the thickness you're going to be doing with a small saw like that. Um, we'll go ahead and set this up. This is a piece of one by two, eighth inch wall. Yeah, no problem at all. As far as power, it's not got a problem. I could probably speed that up a little bit. Um, let's see, go to six. And then go to a piece of two by two tubing here. So thin wall stuff, you can see even at the bigger stuff, it's gonna cut really, really quick. Uh, again, this is not a heavy duty tool. It's a compact tool, so it's meant to cut smaller stuff. But the nice thing is it's got the capacity to cut, cut that larger in size and not necessarily thickness or gauge. Um, and then we'll just throw some rebar in here just for quick measure. I hate rebar as a test because it's just so crummy. It's a very hard and soft metal, depending on where you cut it, depending on what it was made with. I like it. Uh, again, I like the size of it. In fact, let's put it on the scale and see what it weighs. Um, but very handy tool. I can one hand it if I need to. Um, and uh, I can use two hands if I need to as well, if I'm doing a 45 or something like that. I need to really get, uh, be, you know, be on my mark. I can use two hands, uh, but I really like it. I'm using a two amp, two amp hour battery. Um, I made a few cuts here. We're still at three bars. so. I, I, I don't think a tool like this is where you're going to just wear battery slap out. Uh, if you are, then again, step up to a bigger battery. Uh, but even as a brush tool, it's going to work quite fine um, as a brush tool. It doesn't really need to be brushless. I like the bearing design uh, or the multiple bearings as far as, uh, you know, as the, you know, providing that track for that blade to stay in. Um, so nice design, uh, 179 bucks is what the bear tool price is. I don't even know if they kit this yet or if it, you can get it kitted, but $179 is a bear tool. This is a great tool uh, to add to your arsenal if you're doing metal work, especially if you're doing light fabrication work. This is a great tool for that. You're cutting tubing, uh, whether it's round tubing, square tubing, rectangle tubing, uh, whether you're cutting, um, you know, even small pieces of, you know, uh, one inch banding or, you know, one inch plate, uh, two inch plate, things like that. Um, just really easy and handy to use and carry around. So you can carry this to your job rather than carrying your material and your substrates, um, you know, to the big bandsaw or to the big chop saw or what have you. So rigid R8604. So one thing I realized when we were talking about the features is we talked about weighing this thing and we never weighed it. So I've got my trusty scale here and I'm gonna go ahead and weigh this with the battery on it. Let's face it, who cares about what it weighs without the battery, Why, right? Um, so we'll put this on here and it says error. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's clear this. Uh, let's clear that out. And now we're ready. 
So a little over eight pounds. So eight pounds, 13 ounces with the battery. Pretty lightweight tool, especially to be a bandsaw, to be able to cut, you know, uh, square tubing, uh, square metal tubing, things like that. Less than 10 pounds to carry around. That's not that bad at all. It's not like you're putting this on your hip and carrying it around. $179 is a bare tool. As we mentioned in the opening, don't know that they offer this in a kit yet, uh, but as a bare tool, $179. This is gonna complement that full-size bandsaw that you may have. Uh, or it may take the place of, say, where you're using a chop saw all the time where you're carrying that material to it. Now you've got something you can carry around and make those cuts. Now, a lot of times you'll see these on job sites cutting PVC, conduit, uh, rebar, things like that, and that works really well for that. Now, where I'm gonna use this is more in cutting you know, rectangle tubing, uh, square tubing, uh, round tubing, uh, as well as angle iron, flat bar, things like that. It was really handy to make those cuts, use your grinder, clean them up, make your welds, whatever you're building. That's where I'm gonna use this, and I really like a tool like this. I like that it's not a 12 volt design because I need a little more power than what a 12 volt's gonna put out because I do cut things that's heavier than just your standard conduit and PVC. Uh, but I do like the compact design on it that it's not just heavy to carry around. I don't have to two hand this thing. Richard probably doesn't like me saying that, but it, it is what it is. I can easily single hand this tool. Uh, so I like everything about this. I like the ergonomics, like the power it puts out. Uh, again, it's not built to cut huge things, but will still easily cut, you know, the square, you know, square two inch tubing and the, uh, the, the one by two tube, rectangle tubing I was cutting, no problem whatsoever. So check it out. Again, it's the Rigid R8604. If you don't mind, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter as well. Also hit that like button if you like this video. Also the subscribe button and that bell notification is gonna let you know when new videos are available. If you didn't like this video, by all means, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.